my name is Lauren O'Connell and welcome to my ingredients analysis, swatches, application demonstration, and wear test of the NARS Overlust Cheek Palette. This palette comes with three different highlighters and three different blushes. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and you hit that notification bell so you never miss any of my upcoming videos. My videos help you to become a more informed consumer because I dive deep into the ingredients going into our cosmetics, skincare, hair care, and dental products using evidence-based research. You should absolutely know the ingredients going into your personal care products, and I'm here to help you do just that. If you're not interested in the ingredients, feel free to skip ahead. I have timestamps in my description box below, as well as clickable timestamps pinned as the first comment in this video. Now let's get into these cheek palette ingredients. I've consolidated the ingredients from the three different highlighters and three different blushes within this palette because I'm assuming that if you do buy this palette, you intend on using all the different shades. The first category of ingredients is the emollients. And emollients make our skin feel very soft, smooth, and supple. And they also help to reduce the friction between our skin and the actual shade itself. Getting into the first emollient, I want to touch on dimethicone. This is a silicone, and silicones work to not only assist the blush and the highlighter to glide very nicely, evenly, and consistently onto our skin, but they're also a texture enhancer. That means that they have a silky finish, which is going to improve the sensory experience of this product and make the product feel more luxurious. We also have caprylic capric triglyceride and this ingredient is a combination of coconut oil plus glycerin. Glycerin is a super hydrator and a humectant, and humectants are water binding molecules that go into our skin, hold on to water, and give us a temporary plumped up effect. Keep in mind, coconut oil is comedogenic, so if you are prone to acne and blackheads, this ingredient could potentially be a problem for you. These formulas also contain the ingredient tocopherol, and tocopherol is one of my favorite antioxidants. It's vitamin E, and it's very skin smoothing. With continued use over time, it will help to reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. The next two ingredients are often found together and that's because combined, they provide an excellent glide to the formulas. They also make the skin feel very smooth and minimize any feelings of tackiness. These two ingredients are polymethyl silsequioxane and HDI trimethyl hexylactone cross polymer. This formula contains four different binders and binders are going to help keep all of the ingredients within each highlighter and blush together. I do wanna point out that isopropyl isosteri also functions as an emollient. We also have four different thickeners and Thickeners are going to add bulk to the formula. Zinc stearate is also an opacifying agent and an emollient as well. We have one solvent that's hexylene glycol, and this is going to help reduce the viscosity of the formula to just thin it out a little bit. And citric acid works as the buffer. That means it's going to help to balance the pH within the highlighters and the blushes. Hydrogenated polycyclopentadine is a film former. That means it's going to help the blushes and the highlighters adhere to the skin. This ingredient gives a long lasting effect to the formula and it's also rub resistant and it provides a bit of a glossy finish. Next up, we have the opacifying agents, and this is going to help to make the formulas more opaque. That means less clear, less translucent. Opacifying agents also contain colorants, which provide colors to the different highlighters and the blushes. I do wanna point out that synthetic fluoroflogopite is synthetic mica, and mica is a natural mineral with a lot of sparkle and shine. Also, cosmetic grade talc has been approved by the FDA. I know that talc has been in the news in the past few years. I will link down below the FDA's statement on talc. The next ingredient in this formula is ascorbyl palmitate. And I have to be honest with you, 
I have no idea why it's in this palette. Ascorbyl palmitate is a stable, but a weaker form of vitamin C. I love to use vitamin C on my skin and vitamin C helps to reduce hyperpigmentation and it also helps to brighten the skin and even out the skin tone. However, when I use vitamin C, I always, always, always put sunscreen on top of my face. And with this ingredient, ascorbyl palmitate, I did come across some evidence-based research that showed in an in vitro cell culture that this ingredient was applied and they found that it actually caused cell damage when it was exposed to the sun. So why are we putting this ingredient on our skin and then just exposing our skin to the sun? I don't really know. I am going to message NARS and I will ask them why they've put this ingredient in the formula. And if they do respond, I will certainly put their response in the description box down below. I will also link the evidence-based research article I found on this ingredient. And if you are concerned about this ingredient, I recommend you consult your dermatologist. Finally, we have the ingredient phenoxyethanol. This is a very common preservative I see in nearly every single cosmetic and skincare product I review. That wraps up my ingredients analysis. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed learning about the different ingredients in the NARS cheek palette. And comment down below and let me know if there is any makeup you would like me to review for you. Moving on, let's now take a look at the product packaging. The NARS Overless Cheek Palette comes in this pretty thick, substantial size box, and it has this beautiful pink reflective covering. It is a net weight of 0.15 ounces, which is 4.5 grams times six, and the times six is there because there are six different shades within this palette. Also, this palette does retail for 59 US dollars. On the back side of the palette, I can see all the different ingredients, as well as a picture of what the shades look like, and the open jar symbol with a 12M. That means once you start using this palette, you have 12 months until it expires. On the side of the box, I see the word Overlust because this is the Overlust palette, and when I open it up, inside I see a beautiful, pink, very textured cover. This reminds me a lot of the NARS Afterglow eyeshadow palette, which I also recently reviewed. On the back side of the palette, we have the different names of the shades and a little bit of information about the product, including that it is made in Italy. When I open up the palette, Inside, I can see three different highlighters and three different blushes. These all have a very neutral and bronzy, light champagne type tone to them. And to me, this is just screaming neutrals, natural. This is a very natural looking palette. I'm now going to swatch the shades and I'm first going to swatch with my finger just to show the pigmentation of the shade. Right next to the pigmentation finger swatch, I will swatch with a clean makeup brush so you can see what the product looks like when it's actually applied. We'll do this row by row and the first row, the shade is tied up. Then we have deep down and drift. For the blushes, we have let it burn, get lost, and body talk. Now I'm going to apply the blush and the highlighter to my skin. Today I'm going to go for these two shades. This is the Let It Burn blush and the Tied Up highlighter. And that's because I feel that they most complement my skin tone. I don't have any blush or highlighter on my skin right now, which is why I am looking incredibly pale and I do need some flush to my skin. So let's start off with the Let It Burn blush.
And one thing I always do is I like to buff in all of my powder makeup with these Tarte Bamboo Buffer Brushes. They are incredible. If you don't have one, I really recommend looking into them. They really help to make the powders just blend in to your skin, almost to help the powders melt into your skin. So can you see the difference between these two cheeks? Now this one, the blush has really been buffed into my skin, or this one, it hasn't been. Now I'm going to use the tied up highlighter and put this on all the spots of my face where the sunlight would naturally hit. So I've now applied the blush and the highlighter, and I do wanna point out that these highlighters seem to have a bit of a creamy texture to them. They remind me a lot of the Benefit Cookie and Tickle highlighters, which I also have a very comprehensive review on. I find that these highlighters are very forgiving if you have those fine lines and wrinkles, and I do, certainly. I'm 37 years old and I have dry skin, so my skin is very much prone to fine lines. I do have some around my eyes that are emerging, so these types of highlighters work very well for me. I think that the makeup looks beautiful on my skin. This is a very neutral palette, so as I was using it, I did think to myself, I feel like I already have all of these shades. But with that being said, I do think it's a nice combination. This does get quite messy, so if you are particular about your products, keep that in mind. You will definitely be wiping this one down quite a bit. I'm now going to let this just settle onto my skin, and I will check back in with you later on. We'll see how it's looking, and I'll share my thoughts with you on this product. It's been a little while since I saw you last, and I wanted to check back in with you and share how the highlighter and the blush are wearing on my skin. I have not touched up my makeup at all in the meantime, and I was looking in the mirror, and I have to say that the blush and highlighter just make a beautiful combination on my skin. The blush gives me a very natural looking flush and the highlighter has this nice luminescent glow. It's definitely buildable, so if you wanna have that see me from outer space type of blinding effect, you can absolutely achieve it with these formulas. Overall, I have to say, I love this palette. I do have two critiques about it though. The first one is, is just the shades. They're beautiful, I love them. I'm pretty sure I already have them all somewhere in my makeup stash, and maybe you do too. They are beautiful to look at, but they're nothing unique. I mean, we've seen these shades so many times before. So unless this is new to you, these types of shades are new to you, you probably could pass on it. The second critique I have about the NARS Overlust Cheek Palette is that a scorbal palmitate ingredient. I really just don't understand what it's doing in this palette. And because I like to keep my skin as healthy as possible, I will not use this palette during the daytime because a scorbal palmitate can be potentially dangerous when you are exposed to UVB rays from the sun. So I will only be using this as a nighttime palette, and that's pretty disappointing. If I do get an okay from my dermatologist, I will use this during the day, but we'll have to wait and see. And if I do, I will of course let you know in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed this comprehensive review of the NARS Overlust Cheek Palette. Please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think of that ascorbyl palmitate ingredient. I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. Subscribe now to Lauren O'Connell Beauty TV and let's navigate together through the world of beauty.